atomic level view of elements and compounds. Um, so here's a little flow chart that sort of summarizes what we've been talking about here. We've got pure substances, two categories, elements and compounds. Within elements, we have atomic and molecular elements. Um, we're going to look at those. And within compounds, we have molecular compounds that are held together by covalent bonds and ionic compounds held together by ionic bonds. Atomic elements are those elements that exist in nature as single individual atoms. And most elements fall into this category. Then there are also molecular elements. These exist as molecules. You don't find, for example, oxygen atoms in nature. You find oxygen molecules. So there are seven elements that are diatomic, meaning they form molecules of two elements, I mean, sorry, two atoms, two atoms together, diatomic. And um, we need to memorize these guys. And I'll show you some aids to that in a minute. And then there are two, um, that two common ones that are polyatomic elements. I don't expect you to remember, remember these guys. So phosphorus um, forms molecules of four phosphorus atoms bonded together, and sulfur comes, also comes in a form that has eight sulfur atoms covalently bonded together. So those guys are just a little bit odd. So these are the molecular elements on the periodic table. The pink ones, um, nice to know. I won't test you on those guys. The yellow ones, you have to know these guys. Now, what I find interesting is that there are seven diatomic elements. And if you look at this yellow, what shape does that make? A seven. And where does the seven start? On element number seven. I just think that's cool. But what about hydrogen? It's not over there. We will find that hydrogen is an exception to almost every rule. Hydrogen is like the baby brother. There's a baby brother among my children, Andrew. Andrew gets away with all kinds of stuff that the others wouldn't get away with, right? And I know I'm doing it, but I can't help myself. He's just so cute and stubborn. So that's what hydrogen is like. So he's just going to go off and be by himself. The rest of them are over here making a nice seven, starting with the number seven. I find that to be a really good way to remember those guys. Um, the other way is with what's called a mnemonic, a sentence where the letters mean something, right? And the sillier a mnemonic is, the more likely you are to remember it. So this is, this is the one I like. Horses need oats. You guys heard this one before? For clear brown eyes. So, H for hydrogen, N for nitrogen, O for oxygen, F for fluorine, CL for chlorine, BR for bromine, and what? Well, nothing's perfect, right? I for iodine. Okay? Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. We need to know these because if we have one of these elements occurring in, say, um, a chemical reaction, and we have to write the formula for it, it has to be, if it's iodine, it has to be I2. If it's oxygen, it has to be O2. So this applies when these are elements. We need to know these guys. Um, so those are the atomic and molecular elements. Molecular compounds, these have covalent bonds. Covalent bonds occur between nonmetals. So you can identify these by looking at what kind of elements are in the compound. And we do that by looking at the periodic table. I need to make this stair-step line on this guy a little bit stronger. He's hard to see. Somebody got up there with a marker, but it's not dark enough. Elements to the right of the stair-step line are nonmetals. Elements to the left are metals. So you look at the compound. Here we got H2O. Hydrogen and oxygen are both nonmetals. This is going to be a molecular compound. 
carbon and oxygen, both nonmetals, molecular compound. Propane is composed of carbon and hydrogen, both nonmetals. These are molecular compounds. The basic unit of a molecular compound is a molecule. That's why we call them molecular compounds. Chemistry can be a very difficult subject for a lot of students. We are not trying to make it hard. Okay? We're trying to make it as straightforward as possible. So molecular compounds have molecules. Ionic compounds have ions. Ionic compounds have cations and anions. And so there's going to be a metal and a nonmetal almost all the time. Um, metals are the ones that form cations, and nonmetals are the ones that form anions. So you can identify an ionic compound by seeing, does it have a metal in it? Something like sodium chloride. Well, where's sodium on the periodic table? It's on the far left side. It's a metal. Chlorine is on the right side. It's a nonmetal. Metal, nonmetal, this must be an ionic compound. The basic unit of an ionic compound is the formula unit. We looked at the lattice of sodium chloride and it's regular repeating. It's sodium chloride, sodium chloride, sodium chloride, sodium chloride. There's no one smallest chunk like a molecule of water, two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom, that's the smallest piece. And all of the water <coughs> is the same smallest pieces. You could think of an ionic compound as being one giant molecule. But each piece of that substance, each grain of salt, then, is going to have a different number of sodium and chloride atom ions in it. And so that becomes difficult. So for ionic compounds, instead of talking about molecules, we look at the lowest ratio, the empirical formula, if you will. So in sodium chloride, there's one sodium for each chloride. And so that's the formula, and that's the formula unit, OK? We need to understand that difference, but in practicality, for a lot of the calculations and things that we do, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, so here is a molecular compound, propane. And this has individual molecules. Each of these molecules has the same number of carbon and hydrogen atoms. Here is an ionic compound, sodium chloride. And when we look at these, each of these crystals, each individual chunk of matter is composed of the same type of lattice. But a larger chunk will just have more atom, more ions. And a smaller chunk will have fewer ions. The ratio of sodium to chloride is the same, though. Polyatomic ions. What does the prefix poly mean? Many. These are ions that contain many atoms, not just a sodium ion, one sodium atom that's lost an electron. It's multiple atoms. So many common ionic compounds have ions that are themselves composed of a group of covalently bonded atoms with an overall charge. You could think of these as a molecule uh, gone over to the dark side, perhaps. It's a molecule. The atoms are covalently bonded together, but this whole cluster has either gained or lost electrons and has now become an ion. So those are called polyatomic ions. And we'll see these in ionic compounds. So here's the formula for an ionic compound. We can tell this is ionic because we look at the first element, sodium, and it's a metal. We look at these other elements, and they are nonmetals. If you've got metals and nonmetals, it's going to be an ionic compound. This has the element so sodium as an ion, and it also has NO3. And from your memorization quiz, you should know what the name of that is. That's nitrate. It's a cluster of atoms covalently bonded together, and collectively they have gained one electron and have an overall negative one charge. So this compound has calcium ions and carbonate ions. This one has potassium, oh, there's another mistake, and chloride, I'm sorry, uh, hypochlorite. We need to be able to classify substances, look at them and decide, is this 
an atomic element, a molecular element, molecular compound, or ionic compound. So fluorine. First of all, is it a compound or an element? It's an element. Is it molecular or atomic? It's molecular. So I'm going to call this me, molecular element. How do we know that? Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. Four, fluorine. Fluorine is, is a molecular element. How about N2O? Well, that's a compound, right? It's got two elements in it. What kind of elements? They're both nonmetals. So that makes this a molecular compound. How about the silver? That's an element, and it's not one of the seven. So this is an atomic element. K2O. It's an ionic compound. We can tell it's a compound. The formulas, um, if you have two capital elements, two capital elements, two capital letters, that means you have two different elements. So if there's more than one element, it's a compound. We can tell this is ionic because the first element is a metal and the second element is a nonmetal. How about this last guy? Ionic compound. Iron is a metal and oxygen is not.